Our beloved 8% Hard AF Seltzer is now live in over 1,200 locations across the United States. We're now available in Florida, Georgia, Alabama, Tennessee, North Carolina, Ohio, and Texas. Go to hardafseltzer.com today, click on the store locator, enter your city or zip, and find the nearest location closest to you. Live from our studios in Austin, Texas, this is Drinking Bros Fake News with Ross Patterson, Dan Holloway, Papa G with the travel. How you feel? Not good. Yeah. Field reporter, Hot Bob. And Delco Dan with sports. Welcome to Fake News. Yeah, welcome to Drinking Bros. Fake News, everybody. Bringing you the realest, fakest news of the week. Start off with some real news here at the top. Our good friend Ryan Mills, our Texas Hard AF Seltzer rep, is going to be in person doing a tasting tomorrow at the HEB in Frisco, Texas, 4 to 7 p.m., 4800 Main Street in Frisco, Texas at that HEB. We got some signed merch, tons of giveaways, plus you can just get blackout drunk in the store. We don't care. We don't care. That's our 60th HEB here in the state of Texas, D'Anthony. But first, we got to throw some prayers up, dude. We got to throw some prayers up in the air today. For uh, Lizette? No, not Sandoval? for Lizette. Has not gotten back to us. For Chippy? Uh, Chippy has not reached out either. Mm. Um, Chippy, she, well, the she problem with Chippy, it, it, she's got the bit in her mouth. And then, of course, <laughs> uh, she's probably using a, a toy telephone. Yeah, probably. Like a rotary phone that's not plugged into anything. Yesterday's episode was completely out of control. And uh, I apologize on I don't apologize levels. for anything. <laughs> I said what earlier this week. I don't care about any of you people, and I meant it. <laughs> Fucking meant that shit. Now, prayers up for the J6 grandma. They're calling her here. Uh, top story is a trial has begun for the Falcon woman. Falcon is, uh, is, is the city, but it sounded it sounded cooler. You know? uh, oh, she's there's a city called Falcon. Yeah. Damn, yeah. can you imagine being from Falcon? I sure can. I, that's a strong city to be. Where? From. What state is that? Uh, Colorado, I believe. Here. Oh, that's a shitty uh, state. The trial begins for the Falcon woman who says she carried God inside the Capitol on January 6, twenty twenty one. What has she got him in a briefcase? Like Ving Ring Soul or some shit from Pulp Fiction? I'm not sure. You want to pop up that photo there? The one with the, the hat is the one that's gone viral there. Uh, Bob, yeah, right there with the little knit cap. Nope, you had it on Google. Right there. Oh, there she is, dude. Oh, because that's what she was wearing on January 6th. I got it. Okay. There she is. Uh, <laughs> Ten minutes spent on the afternoon of January 6th on what she considers... Uh, to be a God-directed mission. So God told her to go in there to the Capitol. So do you think she's a blues brother? Not sure. Uh, TBD, I wonder if they'll ask her about that at the trial. Uh, could cost 71-year-old Falcon resident Rebecca Lavrentz, a uh, strange last name there, up to a year in prison and fines of more than $200,000. But the great-grandmother and bed-and-breakfast owner doesn't regret walking into the United States Capitol to stop the steel rally protesting the 2020 presidential election results. Quote, I feel like I was there on an assignment from God, she said on Saturday in a phone interview from her hotel room in Washington, D.C., where the trial is about to start. A uh, jury trial for Lavrens starts Monday in uh, U.S. District Court in uh, Washington, D.C., as she faces four federal misdemeanor charges for entering the Capitol more than three years ago, in which she spent 10 minutes inside. Agents from the Joint Terrorism Task Force reviewed surveillance camera footage and confirmed 
uh, that this was her account. And, uh, and the report also states that several tipsters alerted federal investigators that Miss Laverance uh, had been among the crowd. Just standing up for my country makes me criminal, she said. It's not right, and it feels weird to be here. Um, one of her four children who lived in Colorado Springs uh, asked Laverance in December of 2020 if she planned to go to the rally, which was being held on the day congressional leaders were certifying the election, and, uh, and she's, she did. She said, I've been a lifelong lover of, of truth, and I felt something really went wrong with that 2020 election, and I hate injustice. Look, at 71 years old, she took matters into her own hand. Um, oh, she only got one hand? Yeah, it looks like it here, uh, just from the video. Bob, play the video. Does she have two hands, or is it just that one? I, there's a different video where I believe I see two hands, but I wasn't paying close attention. Wasn't well, presumably was she's driving with the other hand. Yeah. I don't know. Which is unsafe. This is unsafe. Yeah. Unless God told her to do that, too. Play well, it's hard to say. I don't know that going into a criminal proceeding, saying God made me do it is the best <laughs> fucking thing to say out loud, but whatever. Who knows? Yeah. I would assume, Who knows? I would assume Jesus took the wheel while she took this video. Oh, wow. Let's so. find out. Play the video. I have not seen this. <laughs> That my own country is treating me like a criminal. It's because I believe that my they stole my the rightful president. Uh, and just standing up for my country, it makes me a criminal. She does have another hand. That's okay. not right. I feel so weird to be here. Wait, what? What's <laughs> filming this? And why does she that, have? That's what I couldn't figure out. Yeah. yeah, I thought she had one hand because <laughs> there was another camera. Does she not know how? cameras work not sure um, was somebody else filming that no she's got two cameras two i'm phones. sure she's a nice lady and all but this is fucking dumb as hell man it's where the other hand is i could have she's going dual phones i could have gone no along that with she had one hand i think one hand you kind of the angle that, that's being filmed from cannot possibly be her right hand it's not it's somebody else it's somebody else's phone there that's attached to like the hood of something so, so she's why also not driving so why is she fucking holding the other phone up i don't really know uh, well, cars are driving here. by her. What'd she pull over on the side of the road? I, I don't think she's driving. She looks like she's a passenger. She's in the passenger seat. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, either way. So that means that the driver is filming. Yeah. Yeah. So let's tipster that as well. Sure. Where's this, Colorado? Yeah, it's Colorado. Hello, Colorado. Just letting you know. Hi, Colorados. Um, See, I got a tip for you, little Colorados. Who were the tipsters who ratted out a 70-year-old white, white, white woman for it's fucking praying? Unbelievable. Um, but it, she says, uh, it didn't take me long to figure out God was saying to go, go there and go inside the building. Uh, I do what I can in prayer, and I put action into my faith. Now, she's a retired registered nurse who drove 25 hours across the country Fasting as well, Dan, mm. and praying. You think she was diped up throughout? I mean, her age, trip. she might be diped up all the time. Could be. to be frank. I, like, no, not to be gross or anything. Yeah. But driving, when you're and she's wearing a lion's not sheep shirt, which was probably printed in China, by the way, because um, that guy's a complete fraud. Uh, which one? Sean, whatever his stupid name is. Oh, the la- I, I know. What's his name? About. Yeah, I remember that story years ago. It, it was like it started during the when the GWAT started, and all these guys <laughs> got out of the military, and you saw beards and tattoos, and everybody mm-hmm. started just like without doing any of the actual work. Yep. Beards and tattoos. Yep. And like I'm an alpha male. <laughs> no, you're not. You're a fucking gay lord. Um, but anyways, yeah, that dude got uh, fined 250 grand by the federal government for taking the Made in China label out of his shirts and putting in a Made he in did. America label. He did, yeah. And then he was like, oh, man, well, sometimes fucking nope. Nope. No. no. Just say it's from China. Nobody cares, yeah. dude. Yeah. Nobody cares. Um, but, yeah, if my mission in life is to know God, she says, and make his ways known and restore the country back to its godly foundation. Without God, there's no justice. So Oof. what's the, if Can't, she gets convicted, Sarah, did God do that? Sarah in the chat says at 71, I'm surprised she still has the moisture to cry. Oh, boy, that's, that's ruthless. That's, wor- that's worse than anything I've said this week. Uh, is that- oh, that's not true. I said some really horrible. <laughs> I said some pretty rough shit I yesterday. I was going through the notes yesterday to find things to clip, and I really teetered on the, uh, what do you call it, the um, training school for orgasms for 
Yep. Special people. Yeah, I don't think... Uh, a jo- finishing school. Wait, there. I said that? Yeah. yeah. Oh, man, that's that's terrible. Sure did. Joel, Son we don't need bitch. any clips going out from yesterday. No, we show, need a bunch of clips, actually. No. Uh, no. So we're t- you're talking about... You I, I, I kind of blacked out for a while, I'm not going to lie. Same. I got in the zone. You were discussing um, how to train mentally handicapped people to orgasm as if they were not mentally handicapped. Correct. Oh, yeah, so they don't make <laughs> weird noises Yes. that are off-putting. Yeah, that I stand by that. Yeah, I know you I do. stand by I'm trying to improve people's lives. So That's is all she, that is. that tops the moisture So comment. is the J6 grandma. So where do we draw the line here? Um, she's got to <laughs> go fund me out probably there. Probably a teaching retarded people how to come properly. I think that's where the, it's, the line is somewhere right? above that. Yeah, it's somewhere there. Yeah, and then anything below that is off. On. So the great-grandmother's got to go fund me uh, for her legal funds there because it's expensive going up against the feds uh, in a trial like this. She's already got $36,000 on GoFundMe, so yeah. people are in. Well, the government know. targets people like this specifically because they know they can't afford to uh, to defend repre- themselves. Defend themselves. Yeah. And it's way worse than you think, by the way. In the state of New York, they have red flag laws in New York now, right? Mm-hmm. But the red flag law is not criminal. It's civil. It's a civil proceeding, which means you're not provided a public defender. Nope. Uh, a New York cop told me this over the weekend. Yeah. Explained the whole thing to me. As soon as I can get somebody who's retired, I'll have him come on the show. One of my buddies is getting ready to retire from NYPD. So whenever he does, I'll have him come on and explain this law. But <clears throat> your jilted ex-lover calls, and not just New York City, the whole state. Yeah. Calls the police department says, hey, I think fucking Ross is out of his mind a little bit. And he's got a bunch of guns over there. So they will just show up to your house and take your guns. No questions asked. Mm-hmm. And then it is a civil forfeiture, which means you have to hire your own attorney to fight them and get your guns back. Right. But you have to pay for it yourself. And you don't get, even if you win, you don't get compensated for the legal fees by the government. Yeah. Uh, and true, by the way, true story. And this is. Uh, that, that's basically like a poll tax, but for the Second Amendment. Like it's completely illegal. Yeah. But they're just doing it willy nilly up there. So, uh, first gun I uh, ever owned was illegal. And uh, it was given to me by a buddy. I didn't really know the, the fuck. As I was living out in California, and it, they make it really difficult to get a gun. And uh, I didn't want to go through the whole fucking process and all that other bullshit. Um, the Plaxico Burris, do you remember that story where he shot himself in the nightclub and got fucking two years um, having a, a gun in his sweatpants and it went off and shot him through the thigh? That, those New York gun laws made me go out and fucking do the actual California shit and sit through the whole goddamn mm. waiting process to do it. Uh, and it's only gotten worse over the years in New York. So be careful, man, for real. Like, if you're in California or New York, any fucking form of gun charge, you are fucked. Um, absolutely fucked. And I cannot stress that enough. So what Dan is saying is, is true, and it's fucking crazy there. Um, because basically what they want to do is either bankrupt you uh, or put you in jail because you know you can't. most people can't afford a great lawyer in, yeah. in New York. Have fun there. You're looking at a minimum of 500 an hour uh, for something like that. Now, with her going to D.C. and going up against the feds, uh, was Homeboy, who was on the show a few weeks ago, was he ever sentenced? Do we find that out? I'll check again. I couldn't find anything last time. Okay. I know he said roughly seven to eight weeks, but I think they're doing some of these cases back-to-back here. So we'll see. But uh, she did peg her legal fees at somewhere in the $200,000 range, which is probably accurate. Um, It's probably. Probably pretty close to that right now. Yeah. Uh, but a year in jail for this lady. I mean, this is a lot here at this point, isn't it? She walked in, didn't fucking trash anything. It's not like she stormed Pelosi's office or anything. Yeah, I mean, this isn't about justice or anything. It's about intimidating your political rivals. Yeah. That's all it is. And they're doing a good job of it. The problem is, I think they may have gone a little too far. And now people are like, well, fuck you. I've got nothing to lose. Like, if, if weird shit happens with this next election, I think we're going to have mass rioting all over the country. You know, I wonder. Uh, <laughs> Hillary was actually on two nights ago saying that uh, this election was going to be rigged for the Republicans. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Well, that, so James Lindsay, who is a author and uh, academic, calls that the iron law of woke projection. So anytime you see leftists warning you about something that's going to happen, they're definitely planning to do it. Yeah, yeah. I, I, there's no way in hell I think we're getting an, an honest election. Um, and a couple of our listeners hit us up and said, are we doing a, an election show this year? Yes, uh, we are, and it'll be massive as always, uh, in particular this year. The problem is, that night, let's say 
Arizona doesn't come back again. Nevada doesn't come back again. Or, or Pennsylvania actually did on time last time, uh, even though that's the dumbest state in the union. They were able to do it. Um, if those states don't come back in time and you have another problem in Georgia or Maricopa County again, you're going to have some fucking riots on mm-hmm. your hand. I mean, there's no way with the technology we have that we haven't figured this the fuck out. And even if the mail-in ballot shit uh, is, is out there and they want everybody to fucking do it, give a hard date that it's due a week before and start fucking counting. Get it all in on time so that way there is no question on the day of the election who won the president of the United States. Because if this pushes out another couple weeks, you thought the conspiracies for 2020 were bad? They're going to be even worse this time. And I'm with you. There could be riots everywhere. But this shit right here is is just to scare people at this point. A fucking 71-year-old, because they said she didn't say anything in the Capitol. She didn't shout. She didn't wave. And, uh, and there was no violence around this woman, and she wasn't in anybody's office. So, I don't know, man. A year in prison for a 71-year-old lady? Seems pretty fucking aggressive here at this point. Uh, but they're still rounding up people, man. This is still going on right now. Yeah, I mean, we heard a couple months ago there were another 1,000 people they wanted to arrest. Yeah, I think 1,200 was the, yeah. the total, and they're still going through footage. What fo- I mean, do they have access to the other 40,000 hours from January 6th is what I wonder? Probably not. Um, I mean, if I'm, uh, if I'm on that, the, the defense for any of these people, I request the entire 44,000 hours. Right. And the, a reasonable amount of time to go over all 44,000 hours, right? Which would be at least 44,000 hours. It would, but that means this woman's going to be billed for a minimum of 44,000 hours. Not if, not if it's pro bono. It's, I, it's not. Um, that's why she's got this, this legal fund out there. Um, what she was doing there inside the fucking Capitol at 71 years old on that day? I don't know, man. I mean, Jesus Christ. Uh, and then fasting on top of that? What? Isn't that Muslim? She's a white lady. Uh, no. Fasting definitely predates Islam. Okay. What religion is that that requires fasting in January? Um, not in January necessarily, but... Um, Catholicism had fasting as part of Lent hundreds of years before Islam was even a thing. It used to be you didn't eat, I think, on Fridays until mm. sundown yeah. or something. And like then Judaism that. had it as well as a form of meditation. Okay. Like, remember, Jesus went into the desert to fast for 30 days yeah. uh, before he got crucified and shit. Like, it's, it was part of Judaism. I don't, I don't know about Eastern religions, right. but I'm sure it's there as well. Like, I mean, Siddhartha Gautama, the Buddha, um, definitely fast a lot but i don't know if it was a rigid, religious prescription or if he just did it because you know he was rich and pretending he buddha was kind of the original antifa guy but he was nonviolent. i guess yeah. you know what i mean like he was a rich dude who was just like oh man being rich is bullshit yeah i'm gonna go fucking sit indian style think like congratulations years, hip. Yeah. yeah like hacky sack in the woods B- buddha like oh congratulations bud yeah. Now everybody's Buddhist and they think they're enlightened. Like, oh, you're enlightened. <laughs> Go back to fucking work, asshole. <laughs> Either way, prayers up for Granny, man. Uh, that one hurt. Great Granny, I guess. Uh, that one hurts. Hopefully God will get her out of this, though. If God told her to be there, hopefully God will get her out of this trial, but probably not. Uh, if they send her away, if they send her away for a full fucking year for this bullshit, dude. Jesus Christ, man. Yeah, I mean, you know. I, look, all these trials are going on right now in front of our face, and uh, nothing, nobody's stopping the government on any of this shit, including yeah, the next one. I kind of feel like if it was my grandmother or great grandmother, I would uh, say no. I would put her in my house and call all of my friends and just sit there and wait. Yeah. Cause, and then make them pry the grandmother out of the house? I, I would, something like that, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Like, whoever's left on their side can try to pry her out of my home. How about that? Yeah, unclear as to what her family members think of it. However, the GoFundMe is rocking if you want to donate to her. Next up, New York versus Donald Trump. Which one is this? Jesus Christ. Uh, This is the gag order, which Uh, is uh, not what it sounds like. No, no. Sounds a lot funner than it is. Yeah. Donald Trump was barred Monday from slamming family members of people involved in his hush money criminal case after the former president repeatedly bashed the progressive daughter of the judge overseeing the upcoming trial. The expanded order from Manhattan Supreme Court Justice 
Juan Merchant comes after the DA's office urged the court to rein in what it called Trump's dangerous and violent rhetoric, including a barrage of online attacks on Merchant's daughter. This issue is not complicated. Family members of trial participants must be strictly off limits, wrote prosecutor Matthew Colangelo, who himself was the target of Trump's vitriol as recently as last week in a court filing. Defendant's insistence, on the contrary, bespeaks a dangerous sense of entitlement to investigate fear and even physical harm to the loved ones of those he sees in the courtroom. Sorry, uh, fuck you. Yep. We're not playing this uh, made-up stochastic terrorism bullshit. Um, the person in question, uh, who is Juan Merchant's daughter, is an asshole. Yeah. Right? Yeah. From my perspective, is an asshole. Um, she runs a company uh, called Authentic Campaigns. Bob, do you want to pull up Authentic Campaigns? We're going to see who their clients are. Yeah, take it, a look. It might give you some understanding why Trump is saying the things he's saying. Mm -hmm. Because she's actively out there running hit pieces on him right now while her dad is trying to fucking put him in prison. Also, I uh, want to throw out that she did post a picture of Trump behind bars mm -hmm. on her Twitter feed over and over and over again. So, sorry. Uh, oh, now the other person's coming after you? Well, fuck off. Um, yeah, pull up uh, their client list on here. They got everybody. All the hits here. Uh, Chicago-based political consulting firm. Top clients include Trump foes like Adam Schiff out of California. You don't need to read all that because we can look at them. Oh, they get the pictures. Um, Pat Ryan, who's a complete fucking retard. Lauren Underwood, total retard. Uh, we all know Katie Hobbs. Um, she's a piece of shit. Gretchen Whitmer faked her own kidnapping with the help of the FBI. Yep. House Majority Ford, that's the Democratic Congress Committee, basically. Is that a woman right it's there? It's their pack. Then Governor have, Tina. Yeah, Tina Kolick, or Kodak, rather. Uh, and then they have uh, the, 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 the Immigrant Justice Fund. Mm. Uh, Biden himself. Mm. Right? Um, the Senate Majority Pack, which is the Senate uh, uh, Senate Democratic Senate Committee. Yep. Uh, Hickenlooper, John Hickenlooper. Um, Vote.org, which is a leftist organization, um, United Nations Populations Fund, which I think was connected to terrorism not too long ago, and then the Wisco Democrats Fund. Um, it's all leftist organizations yeah. that this family is in bed with. Her, his daughter is getting rich trying to put Trump in prison, and he's getting paid by the government to also try to do that. Not only that, but these PACs are raising money off of these mm -hmm. Trump trials uh, as we speak. So so how the fuck is it off limits to bring that up? I agree. Because that's what tr Trump is doing, and he, he does it in the way that Trump does it, which is probably not the most elegant way to make that argument. Um, he probably said some hurtful things. Who gives a fuck? Uh, I don't, yeah. Like, you're a public figure. If you decide to... to foray into politics like this even as a consultant and your family is in public service then sorry you're free fucking game buddy yeah like some remember when baron trump turned 18 a couple of weeks ago and some asshole from like the daily beast was like oh is he free game now can we finally talk shit about him like really you've been waiting around on him like people waited for the olsen twins to turn 18 what, what's there even to talk shit about I six I, I, nine. I don't know. Like Jesus. truly, I, he doesn't done anything. He's actually turned into a pretty decent looking kid. Too. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I kind of yeah. feel bad for him for being so tall because his life's going to be weird because he doesn't look particularly athletic. Ah, uh, good looking dude though. It depends on what he does though. Um, the recent picture I saw, I was like, all right, shit, uh, way to go, buddy. As long as he doesn't get too much taller, I think he'll be fine. Yeah, I think he'll be fine there. Uh, but yeah, everybody's posting about uh, this chick here, and. It appears as if she has, uh, she deleted all her uh, accounts there. Yeah, that's a shame. That is a shame. Uh, but everybody found it. Everybody has the pictures. Everybody has all the fucking mm -hmm. memes you posted to Trump over the years. Like, sorry, man, that's what you're doing here. And if you're telling me this is a fucking real trial on top of that, because this judge should be thrown off this case. Mm -hmm. There's no way you can have this many. Your daughter has this many ties to the Democratic Party, and you're like, Nah, we're all good. Nothing to see here, you know? Uh, this is fucking insane to me. So, yeah, I go bulls on parade on this bullshit. None of these trials are real, so who gives a fuck at this point? Um, I don't fucking care. 
publicly accessible records from the social media sites, uh, formerly known as Twitter, uh, had the username account under Megan's daughter. Uh, it was actually a brand new account, so she made another one here on top of it in 2023. And uh, the other one just got outed about, looks like two hours ago from Laura Loomer. That's been all deleted as well. Why does she need social media at this point? Why do you have to have it, I guess? Well, she works in marketing and advertising. She's the president of this, right? So mm -hmm. you can't take the fucking heat. Because um, there's a bunch of those leftist sites or those, uh, what the fuck do you call them? Those usernames are, it's weird to call them workers, I guess, on Twitter. But they just work for the Democratic campaign. Mm -hmm. Now they've just turned off all the comments on them. And they're just saying whatever the fuck they want. And they're just turning off the comments. So that's where we're at with this. So don't be surprised when everybody comes after you. And uh, this fucking judge and his goddamn daughter. I mean, there's no way this should be legal at this point. But here we are. So fuck it. Uh, I hope the grandmother goes up there. I hope the great grandmother goes up there and, and barges into the trial and prays. Uh, yeah, maybe that'll help. Praise for the daughter. I think if she prays for the daughter, would that get her out of this? Out of the J6 stuff? Uh, yeah, maybe. I think maybe she should pray for Biden next time. You think so? Yeah. Okay. Go lay hands on him. <laughs> uh, Sponsor-wise, we're brought to you by my, our shit, ghostbed.com forward slash drinker bros. I got ahead of myself over here. I'm a little excited today. Ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Finest mattresses in the land. Pillows, sheets, adjustable bases, mattresses for RVs. You name it, they got it over there. Pull up the website, Bob. All you got to do is type in the promo code drinking bros at checkout for 50% off everything in the entire store. Look at that. Boom. There it is. Uh, all the mattresses are made in the good old U.S. of A over here. And then look at that happy camper, literally, uh, because they got mattresses for RVs. Uh, stock, stock up the cart, dude. Go as high as you want. Throw in 58 pairs of sheets if you want, pillows, all of it. Uh, the weighted blankets on there. Everything's included. Uh, and then you get 50% off. When you check out, you're going to see a three-year pay-as-you-go program. No interest as long as you have decent credit over there. And guess what? You can stretch that shit out over three years at 50% off. Hell of a deal. Today's the day you buy a brand new bedroom set. Head on over to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today. Next up, Iranian attack imminence, according to the CIA. CIA has warned Israel that Iran will attack the country within the next 48 hours. It has been reported Israel killed two Iranian military commanders with a drone strike at uh, Tehran's consulate in the Syrian capital Damascus this week. Iran vowed it would take revenge for the attack, and now foreign media is reporting that U.S. intelligence is fearful of an attack on Israel. Iran is said to be planning a combined attack with a rain of drones and missiles fired from its bases at strategic location, locations inside Israel. Uh, have you heard anything about this behind the scenes? Um, no, not specifically, but yeah, this makes sense. I mean, it's got to fucking happen, right? It has to. They got like to do something. Yeah, they have to do something. It'll. It, but I, as I said on, uh, I think it was on Fake News Monday... They have to do something, but not so much that it unleashes Israel, like, too much, right? Mm -hmm. um, now, the U.S. has been critical <clears throat> of Israel's attack, killing uh, the, the Quds Force general, saying that it was an unnecessary escalation. It's like, all right, cool, we just did it a couple years ago, so I'm not sure if you can really make that case, but um, uh, maybe they're right. Going into Lebanon and doing it, maybe that's different than going into what what is effectively an occupied Iraq. But yeah, th they have to do something. I, I they're they're talking about an attack on Israel. They've already been doing that. They did it on October seventh. Yep. The Houthi have started trying to fire rockets into uh, Israel. Uh, rockets have come from Lebanon into Israel, which is why Israel attacked them in the fucking first place. So, um, you know, whatever. Yeah, uh, so Israel's war cabinet met last night to discuss the threat of the imminent attack. 
and uh, they're trying to figure out how to uh, get themselves out of an all-out war spiraling across the region. Now, what I wanted to ask you about this is the Iron Dome. If they are saying they're, that they're going to do what they say they're going to do with missiles and drones and all that other shit, wouldn't the Iron Dome protect all of that? Um, uh, I, I, it depends on what kind of ordinance they use, but I don't think Iran has um, any hypersonic munitions, so yeah, it, it should be fine. Okay. Maybe one slips through, who knows, but... That I, especially now that they're on alert for it, it seems unlikely that they'll be able to do that. I think um, maybe they attack uh, Israel in a way that doesn't involve the country, right? Who knows? Okay. Maybe there's targeted assassinations or kidnapping or something like that. I don't know. Uh, yeah, because I'm, I'm looking at this now. So Iran is saying um, these strikes were ca are carried out by Israeli F-35 fighter jets. So not drones, and they're saying at least 11 people were killed uh, when the consular building next to Iran's embassy in Damascus was reduced to rubble by these strikes. Uh, they're also saying that it killed seven senior members of Iran's uh, warped terrorist army, the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps. I guess the real question is, why does Israel have F-35s in the first place? Uh, why do they have our fifth-generation fighters? I don't know. And that's why... Uh, that's what I'm curious That's the about. newest plane in our, in our fucking arsenal. Why do they have it? They have F-35s? Yeah, they have... Uh, that, I mean, that's our, that's they our have, newest? They have three dozen of them. So I don't know how the F-35 works, but with the F-22, my understanding was there was like the Air Force version that was the tippy top, and then there was a sort of Navy Marine version that was a little bit neutered, might not be the right word, but not as high capability. I don't know about that. Because it was like off an aircraft carrier or something. I don't know if the F-35 is the same way. That was what I remember reading about the F-22 anyway. Uh, I don't know about that, but they have the F-35 um, Lightning II, which is the standard F-35 that I'm familiar with. So I don't, I don't know that it would be any different, to be honest. Did those come from us or are those theirs that they, they built them on their own? Um, no, they don't build anything. So we're giving them these because that's a big yeah. story too. If that's the yeah. if that's the case, yeah, yeah. I mean, so we for a while um, it was a big point of contention in the Middle East because we were providing Saudi Arabia and Pakistan with some of these uh, aircraft as well, but we didn't give them the look down radar and shit like that for it. Like Bob said, there was a different version of it, I guess, without all the bells and whistles that we would sell to some people. Um, but I don't think that's the case here. I, 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 my understanding is they have like a full fledged F. Like three dozen F 35s. Three dozen F 35s. Mm. Great. That probably came from us. Uh, yeah. There, I mean, there's a bunch of countries, though. We sell them to, uh, there's, there's I, don't, I don't know, maybe 10 NATO countries that we sell them to as well. Great. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, I'm just, I just Googled it uh, just to see. So take this answer with a grain of salt. But uh, countries with F 35s. Australia, Norway, Netherlands, UK, Finland, Israel, Japan, Canada, Denmark, South Korea, Belgium, Germany, Poland, Italy, and Turkey. Turkey's an interesting one. Yeah, why wouldn't we give uh, our top-of-the-line aircraft to a fucking Islamic theocracy? Uh, it doesn't make any sense. No, it does, though, doesn't it? Yeah. Shit. Uh, so, yeah, be on the lookout for this. But let's say they do go bombs away, and let's say there's major devastation and or a lot of deaths. Does the United States get in the war, then? Um, I'm not dying for Israel. I know you're not, but Biden will. No, he won't. He's you don't a think so? He, no, he's a coward. Okay. He's not going to do anything. They're right. not, they're not going to fucking... Uh, uh, no, I mean him personally. Uh, will they send young white men to die for the country that they hate? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they've, we, they've been doing it for years. Okay. Just making sure. Like, the broader leftist population has hated young white men for... 50 60 years and they've been more than willing to send them to die for money whenever they should uh you know just get a wild hair up their ass so yeah of course uh okay. so uh, i looked a little deeper i don't think turkey has them but the check there um i've been aware to saying they got banned from the f-35 program probably because of uh 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 what's his name er ergodon or uh, erdogan yeah. yeah he is kind of a twat uh there is a couple others though the czech republic um I don't know if I said the Netherlands. Yeah, that's what Joel's wife does. Singapore. Oh, yeah. so we're, She's so a fighter pilot. Basically, we're just surrounding Russia and China with 
our top of the line aircraft and like, well, I don't know why they keep fucking doing stuff to us. <laughs> oh, that's fun. Uh, next up, probation for Texas mass shooter conspiracy. Two former Donna High School students were sentenced Tuesday after admitting to planning a school shooting in 2022. Uh, Barbarito, Guillermo, Pantoja. Pantoja, yeah. Yeah, 19, and Nathaniel Seth uh, Montalongo, 19, were sentenced to 10 years of probation after pleading guilty of charges of conspiracy to commit capital murders of multiple persons. Hidalgo County records show on May 24, 2022, a detective with the Donna Police Department received an anonymous tip that two students were planning a school shooting at Donna High School. The next day, the detectives followed up on the tip where he interviewed uh, Monologo at the high school. A probable cause affidavit stated Monologo confirmed the legitimacy of the threat by implicating himself in the preparation and provided a detailed explanation of his role in the planned execution of a school shooting at the Donna High School. The affidavit stated the shooting was scheduled to take place on Friday, June 3rd, 2022. He told authorities uh, the Montelongo uh, then indicated that he, along with Pantoja, a juvenile, we're going to enter the school on the last day and shoot multiple people with firearms. The document stated officers with uh, Donna ISD police then detained Pantoja and transported him to the police department where he was interviewed, where Pantoja confirmed uh, Monolongo's statement and added that there was an additional juvenile involved. Are these the, the fuckers yeah. right here? Does his shirt say you? Oh, well, the, first of all, the shirt on the left is whiskey helps, I think, and that's a grunt style shirt, which is kind of funny. Um, and yes, the right is U says U.S. US Army. Army on there. Yeah. No, <laughs> neither hair. one of these neither dudes. Neither of these guys could have uh, survived any amount of time in any military. Obviously, no, no. Um, so these guys. If you read the full affidavit, which is available online, you can go find it right now. Um, they had it's a it's a classic conspiracy case with an overt act, right? So, um, <clears throat> they literally drew the plans out for the shooting on like notebook paper. Okay. Like, I mean, this isn't Call of Duty, man. Yeah. Like, you've been to the school before? Like, all right, go towards the lunchroom, and I'll go the other way. Like, I don't know why you got to draw stuff. They're, they're fantasizing. It's like they're these are crazy people, right? Yes. Uh, only crazy people would go to that extreme to plan shit out like that. And then it doesn't say whether they had, um, whether they both had weapons or not, but one of the kids had a rifle and body armor. And then there was also a juvenile who was not mentioned because of his age. Um, I don't know what if any sentence that person got but this is their punishment they get 10 years of probation where they have to avoid any crimes avoid vicious habits vicious habits like what i so i like to viciously masturbate does that count yeah, yeah it's a habit of yours well it's not a habit it, it's a necessity for you yeah but like it's, i need it's it. a habit for um, a lot of people yeah avoid persons or places of harmful character what does that even mean and how do you enforce that like, the, does a cop show up one time like, hey, your friend's kind of a dick. You're going to jail for 10 years, right? Yeah. Um, remain within the limits of Hidalgo County unless given permission. They have to stay in the county for 10 years. 10 years. Wow. Like, dude. what the fuck? Uh, avoid bars and taverns so they can't go to a bar for 10 years. Uh, avoid the use of alcohol and drugs for 10 years. Complete anger management sessions and avoid all social media during the entire period of the co community supervision. They can't have social media for 10, 10 years. 10 years. So... What we're going to do is, one, not prosecute these kids for planning and getting the weapons to go shoot up a fucking school. We're not mm -hmm. even going to prosecute them. But then what we're going to do is isolate them in the same community <laughs> where they were planning to carry out the attack. For 10 years. For 10 goddamn years. <laughs> isolate them. They can't go hang out with any of, of their friends or anything. They can't make new friends if it includes any kind of alcohol. Uh, and they also can't leave the county without permission from the sheriff, I would assume. Um, well, here's the here's an interesting part. Uh, they also must obey a curfew from yeah. 9 p.m. to 6 a.m. And they were ordered to serve 320 hours of community service as well. At this point, wouldn't you rather just go to jail and kind of get it over with? Uh, because going to being at home for 10 years. Plus, if you're the parents of these fucking dipshits, do you want them around for 10 years? I, I mean, if I'm their parent... 
I probably abort them. It's too late. No, they're, they're, it's a, they're alive. Never too late. It's never too late. <laughs> well, you're not allowed to in Texas. Uh, no, but federal <laughs> law, for federal law, conspiracy to com- mur- commit murder, each um, each uh, count, right? And you could say, if they, if they listed any names or something, you could say a conspiracy to commit murder for each name they put on a list or anything like that. I don't know yeah. what the details like that. But... For uh, for each count, you can get for one count, you can get life in prison for a conspiracy to commit murder. Right? Mm-hmm. These kids should be in prison for the rest of their lives, or just execute them. Right? How did they get out of this? I fucking don't. Like, oh man, society, dude, and society's rough. But I've also never heard of a ten-year punishment where you can't leave the county. Yeah, for it's 10 wild years as hell. And have a curfew. I've had some bad days in my life. Yeah. At no point did I fucking sit down with a buddy of mine and then a minor. And drop plans to go shoot up a fucking school. Yeah, right. Not like once this, did that this, happen this is crazy. These these people belong in an insane asylum. That dude on the left, look at him. When I saw when I was in the Middle East and I saw somebody's eyes look at me like that, that dude's a fucking killer. Yeah, right. Like you got to smoke this motherfucker. He cannot be out in public. The other guy's his bitch. Look at him looking down, eyes averted like that. The other guy's looking straight ahead. Dude on the left needs to be put down. Yeah. The other one, maybe he can be real rehabilitated, but that dude on the left needs to be put down. I guarantee you're going to see him in the news again. Easily. There's no way. I, there's no way these guys are going to be able to live this out for 10 years. Alcohol, drugs, curfew from 9 to 6, all of it. I, no that, way. The one on the right might be fine. The one on the left is going to kill somebody. Easily. Yeah, he's fucking gone, dude. Um, are they from Mexico originally? Uh, it's hard to say, man. Because if, if that, the guy on the left Hidalgo looks like he's going County back. Hidalgo County is on the border. I was yeah. going to say. I mean, the guy on the left looks like he's going back. He's they're from like, Mexico shit. the same way that Governor is. Build the wall, Governor. He grew up in uh, Laredo, which is. Yeah, it's right there. The mall in Laredo, if you're up on the second story of it, you can see Mexico. Yeah. So. You going to blast his fool or what, Holmes? You can hear that across the board. If you listen, if you, put a, if you pick a seashell up. Yep. Just cup it. From the ground on the Mexican border, you put it up to your ear, you can hear Hector saying that. If you if you put a tortilla shell up and just kind of cup it, like the taco Cri- shell. Crispy or? Either one. Soft. Either one. I, I prefer crisp. I had a crispy one last night, actually. I like the crisp. You know, but. Because you are a white. Know, yeah, yeah, but you can get. Uh, I got sour cream on it last night, You too. can get corn tortillas and then fucking put them in those little metal holder things and then put them in the oven and crisp them up a little bit, and that's better than the flour ones, in my opinion, right? Or better than, like, what is it, Ortega, the shitty taco shell? I like Ortega. They're good, the, the ones we grew up eating, but there's, not, there's, nothing re- there's no real food in there. That's, like, some kind of weird hybrid cardboard and shit. It's true. It's so, true. What are you going to do? Uh, next up, sponsor-wise, we got MyBookie.com. Promo code Drinking Bros doubles that first deposit all the way up to $1,000. Tons to bet on right now. We got uh, Women's Final Four. I know. I know. This is the only time we've ever talked about it. I've actually enjoyed watching it. I'm all in on Caitlin Clark and Paige Buckets tomorrow night. Is that the primetime game? Uh, I would imagine they're both in primetime. Well, so take uh, Saturday's games, for example. Um, that's its, uh, The first one's at 6. Yeah. Uh, that's at NC State at Purdue. So we'll start with the men's first. Pull up the, uh, the women's times for Friday night here. Uh, so that's NC State at Purdue. This is Purdue. Minus nine and a half there. All in on Zach Eady, dude. It's Zach Eady's time. He's going to the finals. He's dragging dude. this team to the finals, NC dude. NC State motherfucking money line. Not the big prayer. boys with the wolf pack are going to send Eady home. Not a prayer. Not a prayer, my man. Team of destiny. Team of destiny, Zach Eady, dude. No. You're not stopping NC that guy. NC State, team of destiny. 40 points last game. All uh, from the free throw line. Next up, uh, doesn't matter. What are you going to do against a guy who's seven fucking four, dude? It's strange. Uh, next up is Alabama against UConn. Wow. UConn minus 11 and a half. Holy shit. Uh, I, I like that over under, though. That's yeah, where my money's going. 161 and a half. Let's go. That's an 82 80 game. I'm hammering the over in that game. All in on that. Uh, even Purdue is at 146 and a half. I think they'll cover that. I think they'll cover that. That's a 74 74 game. You're good to go there. Uh, yeah, let's do it. Uh, I'm all in on that. Uh, women's games. What time are the women's games on tomorrow night? Women's games start at uh, Friday. Let's see here. Six o'clock. Six o'clock. All right. Uh, first one up is NC State at South Carolina. South Carolina 
minus 11 and a half. Go ahead and uh, hammer that as well. South Carolina is undefeated this year, 36 and 0. And then, okay, so they did put it in the primetime game. Thank God. All right, that 8 o'clock game here, uh, nine for you people on the East, is uh, Paige Buckets against Caitlin Clark. Iowa is favored minus two and a half in that one. Love to see it. I'm all in on Iowa. Let's go Caitlin Clark. Uh, I've enjoyed watching her play, and this is the end. Angel Reese went to the WNBA, by the way. Uh, also, the Masters are coming up. Uh, betting a shit ton of money on the Masters. And then at the end of the month, we got the NFL Draft. We always have a huge draft show for that. Derek Wolf uh, is our new co-host for the NFL show this season. Uh, he will be in studio for the draft show. Looking forward to that. But you can gamble on all the draft picks. Last year, told you to throw all that money on B. John Robinson going to the Falcons. Sure did. We won a lot together. Head on over to mybookie.com. Use that promo code DRINKINGBROS. To double that first deposit up to $1,000 and get off the couch and get into the action today. Turn your love of sports into your new side hustle at mybookie.com. Next up, bird flu in Texas. That's fun. Uh, migratory waterfowl are to blame for widening avian flu outbreaks in Texas cows and poultry. And wild birds carrying the virus should be headed north soon good i want everybody else to experience it you know um the u.s government since last week has reported cases of the disease in seven dairy herds in texas and one person who had contact with the cows making it the state most affected by the country's first ever outbreaks in cattle texas is the biggest u.s cattle producer the cases in dairy cattle and the second human case in two years who is the fucking human who got bird flu as a human? I don't know. It was some dude that worked in the on the dairy farm. Mm. Really? Yeah. What happens to a human if they get bird flu? Uh, he shit out his heart and he's dead. God damn, that's that seems intense. extreme. Yeah. yeah, no, he just he had he had a uh, he was pretty sick, but they say he's gonna be fine. He's gonna be all right. Yeah. All right. I was concerned. Okay. If you shit out your own heart, Bob, chances are you are gonna die. All right. Uh, the positive test of the Texas egg farm led egg producer. Calmaine to coal, 1.6 million laying hens. The company said Tuesday, Texas had never before suchered, suffered a major outbreak at a commercial poultry facility. Uh, this spread is by waterfowl, he said in an interview. We're ready for the ducks to head north to their nesting grounds. The U.S. Department of Agriculture first reported on March 25th that a cow and milk from two dairies in Texas tested positive for bird flu. Uh, along with milk from the two dairies in Kansas. The agency later confirmed cases in additional dairy herds in Texas, New Mexico, Michigan, and Idaho. Um, how does this happen? Um, well, does you it know. start off as a cold and then it turns into a flu for the birds? Or? <laughs> yeah, uh, so they don't have um, emergency mm. So, or liquid IV or anything? Yeah. Were the um, birds wearing masks? <clears throat> Were they vaccinated? No, I don't think so. Uh, I, I wonder, though, if you track, you know, where viruses like that come from. Because um, this one's very similar to the initial cases in Texas uh, that were that, that they say were introduced by wild birds. Maybe they were. Um, but meanwhile, did you know that the U.S. government is once again funding gain of research this time into the bird flu? No way. With China. You don't say. That's yeah. great. So Journey Ernst from Iowa called this, uh, called them out for this recently. And the USDA replied essentially that we're not technically doing that. It's China doing that. Sure. But it is happening. And then the USDA, USDA's official um, response uh, is that it's okay. It'll be fine. And now we have bird flu in our food chain. Yeah. How long do you think the next pandemic uh, happens here? Uh, I think uh, depends on if Trump gets elected or not. If Trump gets elected, it'll be next spring. No way. Oh, yeah. No shit. Yeah, if they can't keep him out of office, they'll fucking shut it all they'll down. They'll tank his presidency. They have to, right? Like to, to in four years, especially if like right now, I've I said this a couple times before in the last couple of weeks, but 
Democrats behind the scenes are desperately trying to get Sonia Sotomayor to retire right now. Yes. So Biden can put a new justice in. Correct. Um, she's saying no. Yeah. Don't know why. Um, How old is she? How old is Sotomayor, Bob? 69. I don't think she's that old. Yeah, in, in, go- in government years, Bob? She is 69, yeah. She's got 30 more years left in her, I think. Easy, Yeah, dude. I mean, fucking... What did RBG go for? She was like 82, I, I think. she was in her 90s. I think she was 92. Nah, she wasn't 92. I think she was close that, to that's Luff Fine Balloons, Stein. dude. Pull, pull up RBG. She was 87. 87, yeah. dude. Damn it. Um, yeah, so that. it's like, I, I get it, man. I mean, it's time to fucking... It's time to retire for her, probably, but... Didn't a conservative justice retire under Trump? Didn't, um, well, he appointed three. One yeah. was the vacancy that they blocked Obama on. Yeah. The, uh, the third one was Amy Coney Barrett for Ruth Bader Ginsburg. I'm mm. pretty sure he talked one of them into retiring. Well, didn't one of them die? Uh, yeah, Ant- Antonin Scalia died, but I think that was during Obama. That and was. Then he, like Merrick Garland was supposed to replace him, but oh, got the, it, got repu- it, got the it, repubes yeah. shut that down. Um, I don't know. I don't remember how that all went down. But... It, it'll it'll be interesting to see what happens. Yeah. I mean, honestly, even if um, <clears throat> even if Trump gets elected and doesn't have the Senate, yeah, 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 he they convinced Kennedy to resign, and Kavanaugh was the guy. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, so even if even if like he's he's at least got to get a moderate repube in there. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think you go for another Catholic, probably. Um, I, I I honestly I don't know. If you're don't, Trump, yeah. But like a hard lighter, somebody that yeah. they're gonna torch on abortion and shit like that. Uh, but you need a moderate repube that's gonna stop uh, economic tinkering and the two A stuff for sure. Um, and you need a Republican Senate to clear the justice? No, I don't think so. Not if it's a moderate. It would be difficult to for them to block it for four straight years. It depends on when Sotomayor dies. Obviously, I'd sign, I, it's not her too. I think uh, the dark horse. Now let's say, and this is again if Trump gets elected here. So uh, I'm just going off of Trump on this one. I think Clarence Thomas would retire under Trump so they can get another repube in there. Uh, yeah, for sure. But Sotomayor is going to not be around. I mean, they, they're like, they're, for, I don't know why. Maybe just PTSD from having the rug pulled out from him a couple times before, but they're definitely trying to get her out of the way. Yes. I don't know how you can, left or right, justify that after what happened to Ruth Bader Ginsburg. I, I, like she, if you if you're a liberal, I don't I don't know how Ruth Bader Ginsburg's legacy isn't kind of torpedoed by her own like not arrogance. What do you call it? Uh, just her own yeah arrogance, whatever. Like sense of narcissism to to refuse to get out of the seat when she was fucking eighty seven. Yeah, and yeah. you you know Biden had a a private lunch with her, or not Biden? Uh, Obama had a private lunch with her and tried to talk her into it of like, hey, dude, you know if uh, if we don't win in twenty sixteen. Uh, if we don't win in 2016, um, you know, Trump would be able to appoint whoever he wanted to, and uh, she didn't listen. You're right. I, uh, to me, that it is a part of her legacy, um, and people bring it up from time to time, but it's not a, a pressing thing. Where Sotomayor, I'm hearing this more and more in the press mm. of, hey, get her the fuck out of there. Uh, you'd have to do it soon. She's more openly, uh, she got more openly hubris than. Uh than RGB does. Sotomayor is kind of just like up her own ass, I would yeah. say. Uh, yeah, but I mean, towards the end, R- RGB was, or RBG was doing interviews with like Meet the Press and talking shit about the president shit. That is unconscionable for a Supreme Court justice to do shit like yep. that. Also, I think had a, a biopic in the last like, yeah. three years of her life <laughs> yep. with the chick who was the wife in um, Theory of Everything. The, and the she Hawking had a documentary movie. as well. Yeah, she um, and great. her last words, according to her granddaughter, were, uh, stop Trump. Don't, don't vote for Trump. I think her last words were, give Chippy the bit. <laughs> give Chippy the bit. And then she just conked out. Should I, uh, this is for the audience. I'm, I'm watching the chat. So um, do you guys want to give Chippy the bit shirt? Because <laughs> it's going to be, I, like, I don't know where you're going to wear it. It's literally a retarded girl with a fucking horse thing on her head with a bit. I can't. We'd have to make, We'd have to have AI make one. Uh, yeah, you can't take a real tard. No, that would be offensive. Well, uh, also we're gonna have to, you know, pay them. You have to pay the rights for using their faces on the NIL shows. deal for a tard. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck, dude! 
I'm not using that one chick's face, Greg. You piece of shit. Which chick's face? The Brazil, the hot Brazilian one. Yeah, because that's a that's a mixture. Yeah, I'm not doing that's that. It's too close. You don't know. You don't know on that one. Every pretty much there's no there's been no nos in the chat yet, right. uh, which is you know I guess these these are the worst people in the world. Sure. Yeah, we all know that. Mm. It's fine. Uh, next up, sponsor wise, we got firstform.com forward slash drinking bros talking about those micro factors. All right, I took them before we went on air today. Uh, the empty bag is up here somewhere. I forget to take my vitamins. I know you guys do, too. Uh, this takes the, the complication out of it. Boom. Cardboard box, little trap door, a little pouch, six essential vitamins in here. Let's face it. We don't uh, eat the way we need to every day, work out the way we need to every single day. However, it is important to put these vitamins in us to fulfill the demands of our bodies here. What's in it? Well, you got the antioxidants, the CoQ10s, the multivitamins, the probiotics, fruits and veggies, and the good old EFAs. Uh, love these guys. It takes all the work out of it, and I hate fucking work, you know? Can't stand it. I don't want to just scrape jars of pills uh, around and try to guess. I always run out of one and not the other. Boom. This is easy, and it's on a subscription. It just comes to my fucking house. Uh, there's 30 of them. In there, one for every single day of the month. Boom, the next box comes. You're good to go over there. Free shipping on orders over seventy-five dollars. Uh, what do they got for the liver? Over uh, there? Yeah, they've got this dope new product. That's a liver detox. It's not like that. Uh, that stupid bullshit where it's like uh, where hippies say detox. Yeah, it's just stuff to make your liver function better. So if you're somebody who, I don't know, drinks. From yeah. time to time. Like you enjoy uh, an adult beverage from time to time. Do you know anybody? Or if you have 80 of them in one night. Yeah. And you're looking to uh, improve your recovery time over the next couple of days. None of that stupid bullshit that you take before and after. Those like, oh, take a pill before and after. You'll be fine. None of that shit works. No. Because it's not doing the right thing. Uh, liver, this liver detox pill will definitely do that. Sure will. Like it, it is it, that plus rehydration the next day. With uh, with water and electrolytes will definitely fucking like it's a it's a hangover cure. It, it, it works. I use it. Yeah, and then check out the rest of the supplements on their site. Huge fan of firstform.com slash drinking bros. Uh, if you get the energy drinks, dude, that that free shipping on orders of seventy five dollars is a big boy savings over there. Uh, next up is Antifa, a gang, a trial of two men charged in a three year old street brawl. In uh, California Beach Town could soon reshape the image of one of the most debated political movements in America, which is Antifa. Opening arguments Tuesday laid out conflicting views about the roles Brian Lightfoot and Jeremy White uh, played in a heated protest in the San Diego neighborhood of uh, Pacific Beach on January 9th, 2021, three days after J6, dude, where Great Granny was. Great Granny was up there. And damn it, man. Now, yeah. now Antifa's out here in the streets. Uh, that day, the protesters, Proud Boys, ended up in a string of violent brawls with anti-fascist counter-protesters. The prosecution's case rests on uh, not just proving that Lightfoot and White engaged in the acts they were accused of. That's hardly in dispute, uh, as they were caught on camera from multiple angles. Uh, but that they did so as part of a broader conspiracy to commit violence. That conspiracy, Harvey and her team have argued, was organized under and inspired by the banner of Antifa, a political movement of far-left militants who claim to oppose neo-Nazis and white supremacists at demonstrations and other events, uh, as well as uh, burning down half the country mm, in 2020. Yeah. Uh, what's this? What's she holding up there? Uh, I can... I, I... This is what they're like all their shit here, like the that the prosecution's presenting. So this is Jeremy White and his mugshot, I guess uh, social media handles and the sort of his kit, I guess you could say, at one of the uh, rallies. So That's maybe nice. they're trying to show that there's a uniform for this nonsense now. And then this is the other guy, also you can't see as much, but same thing, yeah. uh, social media mugshot, and then it's a little cut off, but again, like a kit, like whatever he was kitted up in for the for the yeah. riot. So the. Defense for these two dum dums. Uh, well, first of all, eleven people got arrested for this shit. Um, which, what, what are they saying that happened? Uh, nine of the eleven took plea deals. Okay. And the other two, these two uh, jabronis, decided to go take it to trial. Um, the 
the defense team is saying, well, you could just say anybody that shows up to a protest wearing all black now as part of Antifa and, and charge them as a member of a gang, right? Um, essentially, the whatever sentence you might get for the crime you committed would double if it's part of gang activity. Oh, gotcha. Uh, and you would also be open to uh, RICO charges for ongoing criminal activity as part of an organized crime okay. uh, 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 unit or whatever the fuck. So that's what the defense is saying, but... <clears throat> This is the same bullshit that people have been trying to pull for the last however many years. I'm sure you remember fucking Jerry Nadler's fucking hobbit looking ass in. Oh, Antifa, that's a myth. Yeah. That's a myth. That's just some people, you know, it's an idea. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. That's Terrorism is. is an idea as well. It sure is. But there are terrorist groups, and Antifa is one of them. So uh, it'll be really interesting to see how this goes. The judge in this case, or I'm sorry, the, the prosecutor in this case um, was... Uh, a former Republican. All right. Uh, and not that she's not a, that this woman right here was a, is a Republican. Uh, this prosecutor position is an, as a uh, nonpartisan position, but she was a Republican before. Okay. And some other position. I don't remember what it was. So uh, yeah, this would, this would set a precedent for even federal charges against the Antifa. Should Trump get elected and they actually start enforcing the law again under RICO. So it'd be interesting to see how that works. Yeah, because the other part of this is, uh, is that what they're trying to say using the defense that she's a Republican going after the left? Um, I mean, the media is saying that. I haven't seen it come up at the trial at all. But that, like the, the defense is pretty much saying these are just people who are anti-fascist who like to wear all black to protest. It's like, all right, cool, man. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's a, like apply that to any other gang. I guess uh, like black street gangs wear colors that are similar. So you could tell then uh, an MC would wear a cut that has a fucking logo or something yeah. on it. But the mob doesn't do that. None of them. Like the triads, the fucking Italian or Irish mobs, none of these people, they don't have uniforms. They don't, have, they don't have social media <laughs> handles. Like, oh, this is fucking La Cosa Nostra. Yeah. Philly, Philly chapter. Like, no, it's not a thing, right? So that, that level of uh, um, evidence to classify something as an an organized crime uh, or a, a criminal organization rather is not part of jurisprudence. You don't need to prove all that shit. Now she is, she's trying to show this is how they look. This is the groups they're affiliated with here. Are the, here's the language they use like a cab man right there. That's his username. That means all cops are bastards. Um, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. So I'm sure that's part of it. She's trying to show uh, continuity between all these individuals. Okay. Um, and then, Bob, uh, keep this picture up on screen here real quick. The irony of uh, him protesting against white supremacists is he looks like a white supremacist. He probably is. He's got a shaved head. Yeah. Um, so the, these, a lot of these Antifa people are people who would have been white supremacists before, but they ran out of testosterone. Got it. You know got what I mean? And now it, they're yeah. just cucks. Well, you're, you gotta, and you're looking for a group to join. Yeah. A lot of these groups are booked. You know, uh, there's some there's women out there who complain all the time about not being able to join a book club or a wine club because they don't live on the right street or whatever. I understand what he's going through, Jeremy, and fight the good fight there. OK, do you know what a football firm is? Do you remember uh, Green Street Hooligans? Remember that movie? Yeah. So that's a real thing in England. It's like teams have uh, crazy fans, but they also have a firm. Most of the teams in the in, uh I don't know about the lower leagues, but Premier, most of them do. And then League One and Two, for sure. Um, I always wanted, me and Jeff, remember Jeff Taylor? Yeah. Uh, that sniper that used to be my roommate. We always wanted to start one, for, but for children's soccer. Uh, that'd be right? great, yeah. So he and I would just fucking pick a team and show up, and if anybody had anything to say about what's going on in the field, he and I try to fight them at every fucking match. You come to my game tonight. I got a game, so I got a game tonight that I'm watching. Uh, I've got you know? to take a shit or something. I mean, okay. I, I'll do something, anything other than that. Uh, I just thought it'd be fun to start a football firm. You know what I mean? Here in America. You can paint your face maroon. We have to wear maroon jerseys tonight. So. No, that's not part of it for me. Okay. Like I, you, you, you want to go undercover because you're trying to jump the other <laughs> guys. Right. So like if I see some dad incur like not even talking shit, encouraging his own son too much. Yeah. That dude's got to get dealt with. against my yeah. team. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. I appreciate that. Uh, pop on in tonight. Dude. I might. <laughs> uh, next up, National Guardsmen arrested for smuggling illegal immigrants in. A Texas National Guardsman was arrested on Sunday for allegedly smuggling 
an illegal immigrant across the southern border with dash cam footage obtained by Fox News showing the moment he was arrested. That's fun. Do we have it? Oh, yeah. Let's see it. That'll be a good one. Uh, just as uh, Governor Wheelchair Greg Abbott's office said the man is a traitor and a criminal if the charges are true. Now, that's, that's if the charges are true. They're I definitely guess. true. Yeah, the Texas Department of Public Safety confirmed to Fox News that it arrested Savion Johnson in Brackettville, Texas. Never heard of it. On charges of evading arrest, smuggling of persons, and unlawful carry of a weapon. While stressing that it was an ongoing investigation. Let's see this thing, Bob. What do we got here? You got any volume on it? Yeah. Give me the Mexican. Give me the Mexican. Not this way. Come on. Is that the illegal? I'm guessing that's the Mohican. Okay. No, that's him. It's the guy. It's the officer. Pretty sure it's the officer. For one, the one thing he was wearing Birkenstocks. fucking red lights. I know. I'm just very scared. Yeah, that's him. He's speaking. He's a driver. Him. He's the. He looks like the immigrant. Well, you know, most of the people that work for Border Patrol are Mexican. All right. So where's the immigrant? Where were they hiding those? In the trunk of the car? Uh, he's inside of the, the tire. No, sh- shut the fuck no, up. I was like. <laughs> Holy shit, that'd be fucking It would be badass. dope, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know how many people you could have fucking killed, man? Jesus Christ. Fucked up. No shit, man. Fucked up. He said, I fucked up, and the cop replies, yeah, no shit, man. No, sir. One in the vehicle. Oh, you had a weapon in the vehicle, too? Jesus Christ, man. You don't have anything else on you? No, sir. Hey, Troop, you want me to put him in mine? This will be an interesting case to yeah. follow because was it like a friend of his or um, did he get paid by the cartel or something? Yeah. And then if that if it's the latter, then is this going on like more than this? Where's the Mexican at? Uh, the, the immigrant that he... Is he still inside the car at this point? He, he might not have anyone with him at the moment. The immigrante? Is that, yeah, that's, that's the Spanish pronunciation, right? Uh, I don't know. Chalupa? Okay. Hut, hut. Taco Bell? I don't... Yeah. I, look, man. Yeah, there's a lot. I'm white. I don't, I don't know how to say yeah, words. Me neither. Me neither. I don't speak Spanish anymore. You got Pantosia right, but only because... Um, He's a fighter. Sure is. Like, that's the only reason I've got, you got something that one, right? to go yeah. off of, which was nice for me today. Damn, dude. Well, anyways. Skip ahead there, Bob. Let's see if they pull out any fucking immigrants. I want to um, see I want to see some shit here. The press secretary for wheelchair says, um, we have zero tolerance for Texans who violate laws that directly contradict the missions we are seeking to achieve. The accused illegal smuggling may subject him to a mandatory minimum prison sentence of at least 10 years. He deserves more. Yeah. Um, actually, with the weapon in the car, if if you have, I don't I don't know about Texas law, um, but sometimes having a weapon on you is an escalator. So if you had, if it was a drug deal and you got popped for like trafficking cocaine and you had a gun in the car as well, yep, it escalates it like it's a. There's yeah. the gun right even there. She's you, taking a picture of it right even now. Even if you own the gun. Yes. Like it's legal and everything. If I had a, if I have a permit. For my weapon, or it's legal, or whatever else. If I'm in, in Texas, you can carry concealed with no permit. Mm-hmm. So let's say, even considering that, I've got an, a license to carry the gun, and I have it on me during the commission of another crime, then I'm committing a crime while armed. So yeah, it's an escalator, no matter what. Wow, <clears throat> uh, this fucking guy. Uh, yeah, it's, this will be an interesting case to keep an eye on because yeah, I'm, you're right. It's either a family member or he was paid. By the cartel. Yeah. There's no and in if, between there. So uh, I don't know if you saw this. There's another report that came out on uh, shit. I think it was on Monday that cartel dudes are talking shit to sheriffs on social media. Really? Yeah. Fuck, dude. Yeah. That's gnarly. We had a guy like that um, in, uh, in Sauter City, actually. So we had a tip line mm-hmm. for bomb makers and terrorists or whatever the fuck else. And this dude would call it all the time. Like, you're never going to fucking find me. 
Really? Oh yeah, all the time. <laughs> and then we had like we can we can triangulate cell phones, right? So we would immediately put his number into our fucking thing and find out exactly where he is, and he was never there. He was doing it just to fuck with us. To be honest, it could have been like a a kid. Yeah. Not not like a child, but like a fucking eighteen year old dummy who was just like they'll never fucking catch me. That's pretty funny. I'm just going to make this call and then fucking leave this building. They'll never suspect it's me. I'm fucking like 18. So you never caught the guy? His name was Syed Allah. Really? But that's a, it was a pseudonym, obviously. Okay. Um, no, we never found him. That's funny. He, call, he must have called that tip line a hundred times. <laughs> talking shit. Like, you fucking, you fucking Americans and never catch me. <laughs> like in really shitty English. It was, it's actually really funny. That's great. Uh, yeah, the Stingray. Frightening me. That's right. That's uh, that's not going to be fun for this guy, though. He's going to go away for a while. Well, I mean, it, may, it begs the question, based on what we've seen lately with cartel interaction on both sides of the border, on the Mike side and our side, are uh, we going to like? Is this going to become more prevalent? I'm sure they've been trying to insert themselves in for and, years and develop bet. assets in, inside Border Patrol I mean, forever. But. Yeah, yeah. If you think that they're inside like Arizona's state government, they're certainly inside sheriff's offices. Easily, yeah. easily. Um, so yeah, I, I, this guy just happened to get caught is the difference. Um, I don't think I've ever seen somebody just, oh, I fucked up, man. I fucked up, you know? Well, yeah, 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 you did. Uh, that one's going to be a long one for you, my man. Uh, probably not. He'll plea it. He'll, he'll give him the information that he got from the car. Unless it's a, if it's a family member, he's kind of fucked, to be honest. But if it's a cartel, then he can rat on people and then he'll get, uh, he'll probably get off. Okay. Get so he'll get 10 years of probation. <laughs> He's got to live in the county, though. Yeah. Uh, next up, Hard AF Seltzer's up next. HardAFSeltzer.com. Uh, we're live in Texas, speaking of which, if you're looking to, if you just smuggled somebody in, you're looking to have a celebration across the border there. We're in 60 HEBs in the state of Texas. We're in Kroger and Houston right now. Every single total wine in Texas. Also live in Georgia, Alabama, Florida. Uh, Wilmington, North Carolina, Outer Banks in North Carolina, uh, in Ohio as well as Tennessee. So, look, Alabama's partying for the Final Four this weekend. Go down to Corks and Tops over there. Rama Jamma, have fun. Congratulations, Bama fans. First trip to the Final Four ever. Probably going to be a short trip, though. Uh, you know, uh, anything UConn. can happen if they hit their threes. You never know. Man, they're playing UConn, though. That's a tough one. Yeah. They're unstoppable right now. Columbus, Ohio, uh, rocking at the bars. Everybody's going out for the weekend watching the games. I get it. Shit, man. People are going out for the women's games, like I said earlier, too. Uh, those will be fun to watch. Uh, head on over to the store locator at hardafseltzer.com. Type in your city or zip, and it'll take you to the closest location nearest you. That's bars, restaurants, grocery stores, all that stuff, all the Piggly Wigglies down there in Alabama if you're watching the game at your house, too. Feel free to grab a 12-pack. Also, we still ship right to your house at hardafseltzer.com. If you're not one of those states in one of the surrounding states, grab a case and support us and support the show. Uh, Florida, rocking right now, dude. Total Wines everywhere. All, all over the, the southeast. We get, we're in every single Total Wines there. Two as well, and then we're looking to get into Kroger's. Uh, next up, this will piss you off. A shocking email exchange reveals troubling priorities of Athens mayor and Clark County Sheriff only two days after Lakin Riley's murder. Yeah. Obtained through Georgia Open Records Act, the exchange on February 24th, 2024, shows Sheriff Williams questioning Mayor Gertz about the county's sanctuary status as he is unaware. Uh, you can go ahead and show that email there on screen. Uh, and then read that aloud if you can there, uh, the parts that are highlighted. Uh, okay, so this is from the sheriff to the mayor. Uh, okay. If the ACCUG embraces being considered a sanctuary, then come out and say so. If not, please clear this up. If the ACC gov will not address this, I will do everything in my power to protect the integrity and professionalism of the Clark County Sheriff's Office and myself. I look forward to any response and welcome any meeting or discussion to explain why this can or cannot be addressed. Whoops. That's, uh, that's, that's from, not great. From that's from the sheriff, right? To the yeah. mayor. So the sheriff is like uh, essentially soft pitching. How do we clean this up? Yep. Um, yep. And the next statement from Mayor Gertz is even worse. Um, goes on to endorse non-cooperation. Just, just pull that email up. Is it up there? Uh, yeah, go ahead and put that one up there too. 
and I'll read it. <clears throat> yeah, oh, this is the one you want, the second yeah. one? Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so this is the mayor responding. Uh, blah, 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 our protocol uh, is to honor, not honor ICE uh, detain detainers. We've talked about this before. A detainer is where um, illegal immigrants get arrested by local or state police, and ICE will reach out. Um, HSI will reach out and say, hey, they put, they put a detainer on them, which is um, requires that the local office calls ICE and lets them know when the guy's getting out so they can pick him up and deport him, right? Uh-huh. Certain agencies like this one and everywhere in California, everywhere in New York, um, Massachusetts, several others, um, the sanctuary city or the sanctuary states and cities, Colorado, I think, is one now as well. Um, they refuse to obey by that detainer rule. They won't do it. So um, put that back up there. While the community is experiencing deep trauma right now and emotions are understandably raw, I support the detainer policy as one that is both humane and following the well-documented propensity of immigrants in the U.S. to be less criminally inclined than their native-born population. So he's, she's saying that it's okay not to report potential murderers who are fucking illegal immigrants because Americans are more likely to commit crimes. Huh. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. These now, parents, these people are committing crimes just by being here. Yeah. That's why they're called illegal immigrants. You can say whatever word you want to for it, but that's what it is. Yeah. So every illegal immigrant is a criminal. Every one of them. Every one of them. Every one of them. Yeah. Just by being here, you're committing a crime. Get the fuck out. But Biden even said he called them illegal immigrants and then walked that wow. back as undocumented, what is it, people, persons? Slaves, freedom drivers, something, what are they fucking like calling that. it now? Uh, if you're the parents, though, of this poor girl and you have to fucking live out this shit every single fucking day over and over and over again, god damn, dude. Uh, that's awful, man. It's just fucking awful. I, I don't understand the fucking need to, to try to protect all these assholes for illegally entering the country. Well, we got to get them registered to vote. We got to get them armed, obviously. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's uh, instead of prioritizing solutions to prevent tragedies like this, Gertz um, is kind of treating this like a PR drill, I guess you could say. Um, my takeaway at, for the moment is that in the immediate wake of the tragedy, to quote, focus on the victim and avoid political messaging, focus on comfort and unity. I know uh, how difficult this time is for everyone given the tragedy Athens has experienced, as well as a variety of things. Uh, that land on her phone. So she's instructing employees in the city, essentially, including law enforcement, to uh, focus on comforting the victim in unity, but stay away from the political message. Yeah. It's not, a, it's not a political message. Nope. They're illegal immigrants. This guy is a fucking murderer, and you let him out of jail instead of turning him over to HSI, and he killed somebody. That's what fucking happened, you goddamn piece of shit. Has nothing to do with right or left on this one. Uh, somebody illegally entered this country... And we're, we're trying to treat them as if they're fucking normal American citizens. Fuck off. Fuck right off. Uh, this is going to get worse, too. If we have another four years of this shit, this is going to be fucking worse, dude. Um, sorry about it. Uh, anywho, we appreciate you tuning in, kids, today. Bro Box is up on drinkingbros.com. You can buy that now. You can also submit for Drinking Bro of the Week over there. Fill out the submission form. It'll come directly to us, and we will read it live on air. I don't do this often, but uh, it's my own drinking bro of the week today. It's my son. My son is 10 years old today. I kept a human alive for 10 years, which is pretty wild. On your own, too, with no help. No help from, from my wife. No. Definitely not from her, but from anyone. Really. Yeah, I'm a single father, essentially. Yeah. Raising him on my own. We got a soccer game tonight. Single I'm hoping, dad uh, life. Hope to get hope to get him a, a, a victory out there tonight on his birthday. You know, what if I let him down and I lose on his birthday tonight? Because it is me. Let's face it. You know, as the coach, I, I bear all the responsibility of a loss if we lose tonight. So, uh, hopefully, uh, we can get the big W there. And then shout out to Joel. Uh, he was in uh, the back office there earlier. Joel gave him a little pizza party because uh, he got him out of school. And uh, got him some Domino's pizza. Thanks, Joel. I appreciate it. You are loved, Joel. You are loved, okay? Uh, yeah, I think jo Joel watches my dogs a lot, too. And I think it works really well because they see him as a peer. 
Yeah, he's very like childlike. They, they also think that he's one of my dogs. Yeah, he's very childlike. Right, because I yeah. feed him. Whenever he comes over, I'm feeding him and shit. Sure. I think that's, uh, you know, it's nice. He's got childlike qualities. Too. Joel's a good guy. Yeah, he sure is. I was actually talking him up earlier today. Somebody asked me what I do with my dogs when I go out of town. I'm like, usually Joel watches them. Yeah. And they were like, that fucking. The guy who lives in the trailer? The dude from there. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's awesome. Good guy. He's a good guy, Joel. Uh, go to iTunes, rate the show a five star, and leave a quick review. Also, head on over to Spotify. It's just a five star, and you can walk away. And then keep an eye out for that Chippy merch, also. Ch- give, give Chippy the bit. Go ahead and give Chippy the bit. Um, Spotify, we're up to 8,100 reviews over there. We're close to that 10,000 number. Nope. I promise you, I'd shut the fuck up forever after we, we hit 10K on iTunes and Spotify. We're super goddamn close on Spotify, so keep going, dude, and then I can eliminate that from the end of the show. I'd love never to say that again the rest of my life, all right? But I love you guys. For D'Anthony to Anthony Holloway, I'm Ross Patterson. This is the Drinking Bros 